Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the USMLE Coaches Corner. My name is Dr. Paul. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process that we use with our students that helps them to achieve step 2 CK scores above the 250 mark. Now, it's not easy, but the process is actually pretty simple. There's a set number of steps that you can take that will position you to absolutely crush this exam. And I'm going to walk you through those today. Now, before we dive in, if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and set up notifications. And I will let you know every time we release a brand new video. And if you find this to be helpful, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button below. All right, guys, I've got the magic list of, of steps written out here. And what I'm going to do is walk you through each one of these and then elaborate a little bit on each of the steps so that you can get sort of uh, an idea of the nuances of each step. So first and foremost, you want to start early. Ideally, you're going to start your prep on day one of your very first rotation. So if your very first core rotation is internal, you're going to start with the topic of internal on day one. Okay. The reason why we want to start right away is because we cannot afford to waste a single day. If you wait until you're, let's say, halfway through internal before you start studying, that's six valuable weeks that you can't get back where you could have been building a foundation and now you could have been deep diving into the nuances of internal medicine. Instead, now you have to start building that foundation. Okay, so start as early as possible. Now, when you know when your first rotation is, let's say your first rotation is December 1st and it's internal, start a week before, start to sort of dig into some of the higher yield ideas within that specialty so that you're at least familiar. And that way you're not sort of, you know, thrown into the gauntlet on day one. Regardless, though, your hardcore study should start on day one once you actually start digging into patients. Step two, set a daily schedule for studying based on your rotations demands. Now, I'm not going to pretend that rotations are easy, that you have eight hours a day to study, um, and that some rotations are extremely demanding. Surgery, for example, is extremely demanding. Internal can be demanding. It really depends on where you're at, the caseload, etc. But once you know generally what the schedule is going to look like, you can create your schedule around that. So if you, if you have to be in the hospital really, really early, maybe your studies are shifted to the afternoon throughout that rotation. Maybe you don't have to start till 11. Whatever it may be, work around that and mentally prepare yourself. Okay, for the next 12 weeks during this rotation, I'll be studying every single morning. Maybe you switch to the afternoon, maybe the evening. Whatever it is though, make sure you ask around what the schedule's like, what the demands are like, so that you can then craft your plan, because a plan is important, based on that. Number three, you're at this point going to pick a resource and you're going to start spending time daily with that resource. This can be a question bank, this can be a book, this can be videos, I don't care what it is. You wanna use a trusted resource to dig into the specialty so that every single day, no matter what you see on the floor, a lot of the times you see the same sort of things over and over again. Every day, you're moving your way through a resource, you're taking notes, you're learning the foundations, you're learning everything you need, you're creating index cards because just a little side note, the CK is so much of what is your next best step. And you know, I just I've just finished going through our brand new CK crash course, which which is available in 2022. And you'll notice when you're prepping for your CK that there's a lot of times when we can do an ultrasound, a CT, an MRI, but what's the next best step? Most accurate, maybe, maybe the cheapest and and equally as accurate as, as the other test. You need to know what the next best step is. So creating index cards uh, so you can do drills for yourself is gonna be extremely valuable. And so as you make your way through whatever resource you choose, like I said, videos, question banks, books, I don't care, take your notes, create index cards so that you can then review consistently as you move forward with a real easy to use resource that will help really just drive home all of these next best steps. If you do that, that alone is gonna boost your score 20 points because a lot of students simply don't pay attention to that as closely as they should, and it's super important. So whether you have an hour a day, whether you have three hours a day, just spend time daily making your way through a review source until you've gotten through the entire specialty. You got your notes so that you can then use those to study. You've got your index cards so you can those to do rapid review. And um, ultimately, this is where you learn. So take time, go through it slowly, pull out everything you absolutely can. Now, the fourth thing is most rotations these days, the cores especially, have shelf exams. I want you to treat 
shelf exams like they're your actual USMLE. Now, I know what you're saying. You're going to say, Dr. Paul, it only counts for 10, 15% of my grade. I just want to get a 70% so that I can get my points, pass, and move forward. That's okay. And if that's all you want to do, that's cool. You're not going to get a 250. The students who treat their shelves like it is life or death are going to do exceptionally well on their CK. And here's why. Because they're treating every specialty as though it is the only thing that matters. And when you put everything into your studies for a shelf, you're going to do better. That's going to translate into you having worked harder to do better. You got better notes. You got a better better index card slash drill sessions. And when you finish that rotation, you're going to know it inside and out. And that's key because as you move forward through the next rotation and the next, you want to consistently refresh that information, keep it on the forefront of your brain so that when you finish internal, you're an internal expert. You then go to surgery. You're going to do the same thing in surgery, but you're still reviewing your internal. Once you're done surgery, you're still an internal expert. Now you're a surgery expert. Then you do peds, so on and so forth. Treat those shells like they're 100% of your grade. That's a good way to look at it. If you do that, you will put the energy into mastering the information that is going to translate ultimately down the road into easier dedicated prep and a higher score. Number five, you want to have a daily review schedule for old info. So I kind of just alluded to this. If we finish internal medicine and then we move into surgery, you want to not only have dedicated time every day to go through your surgical review source or whatever rotation you're in, but you want to dedicate a little time to consistently reviewing your old stuff. So maybe we have 10 pages of notes we took, high yields, you know, uh, small writing or printing, uh, the highest yield stuff that we use to study. Now that you know the details of internal inside and out, having a high yield written review source is great because then you can look at it and sort of just remind yourself what's important. Same thing with your index cards. Maybe you take 30 minutes every single morning when you wake up or 30 minutes, you know, at lunchtime, whatever it may be, and you simply review something that you've already done and then cycle through that. So let's say you've got 10 pages of internal medicine notes. Let's say you're three, four rotations in and you've got 10 pages of internal, 10 pages of surgery, five pages of peds. Every day during your dedicated review to old stuff, you're going to cycle through. So maybe you do three or four pages of internal. Cool. Put them at the back. And then the next day you do the next few, put them at the back. Then you get the surgery and you cycle through this. And what you're going to notice is that as you move along, you know this stuff better and better because you see it all the time. So then all you need to do is look at a page and say, boom, 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 boom. I know this. I know this. I know this. Moving on. The key here is to see things so frequently right after you've mastered it that that mastery never actually goes away. So you might move into surgery, but you're consistently on top of your internal game. Then you move into peds and you're on top of your internal game, your surgery game, and you're learning peds. Then you move on to psych. Your internal game is top notch. Your surgery game is top notch. Your peds is top notch. Now you're learning psych. You sort of see the pattern here. It takes a little bit of effort and consistency. That is key. Daily consistent effort to learning new stuff, but also reviewing old stuff. As you move forward, everything stays fresh. This is key. You keep that stuff fresh as you move forward. When your last core is coming up and it's time to get ready for CK, guys, you don't have to study that hard because you know this stuff inside and out. Now, the last thing you want to do is book your exam as early as you can. Now, I know that there's windows and you can't just book it a year ahead, but when you know that your final core is up and if you have the capability of booking your CK shortly thereafter, book it. Because if you followed all these strategies, you are ready to take your exam the day you write your final shelf in your final core. Because if you've been doing everything, you haven't lost any of your knowledge for any of your old topics, and you're right now in your last core. And so everything is right there. Now, of course, you can give yourself uh, a couple extra weeks if you want to do some just dedicated study. But at the end of the day, once you are two to three weeks out from your exam, start taking some hardcore assessments like NBMEs. Now, the reason why you only need to do it two to three weeks out is because if you've been doing everything up to this point, everything is fresh at the top of your mind. And you should also have been consistently doing questions that were mixed to keep reinforcing all of your knowledge. As long as you've done that, then those assessments are basically A, to confirm that you're where you need to be, but B, also maybe point out a little 
couple areas of weakness that you can then just focus on a little bit more during that dedicated time between your final uh, uh, core and your actual exam. So you can see the prep process for the CK is a lot different than it is for step one. Step one, we've got that dedicated time period. This one is a little bit different, but if you're aggressive during each rotation to learn that stuff and you're consistent with your review of old material, guys, you're not only gonna be finding yourselves in good position to take your exam right after your uh, final core, but you're gonna be in a position to do very, very well. And ultimately that's the goal. I wanted to give you the step-by-step -step process to get a 250 plus. Now, why is 250 that cutoff? If you can get a 250, you can basically get into almost anything. Now, of course, you know, if you wanna get to something crazy competitive, you need to have the research, you need to have the rotations down the road. So if you're an IMG and you wanna do something like plastic surgery or an AMG and you wanna do plastic surgery, you can't just apply to it. You gotta be in the specialty. You gotta be doing research. You gotta be doing uh, volunteer work. But those that's for a different um, video. Ultimately, you do this, you set yourself up for a fantastic CK score. That's going to open the doors when it comes time to applying for residency to essentially anything you want. And then you're going to tailor, of course, your application to whatever specialty you're looking to get into. But follow these steps, guys. Now, I'm not guaranteeing a 250, but I'm telling you the students that we've worked with who score the 250 pluses, they follow this strategy to a T. Works every single time. Make sure you do assessments, though, to make sure you're where you want to be and then fix any weaknesses to get you to that next level. All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions, let me know. If you found that to be helpful, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe, set up notifications, and I will let you know every time we release a brand new video. Appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. We'll see you on the next episode.